Do you belong to a, to a, a, a church organization? Not at all? Why don't you pull over and have a conversation with us? You say, not right now? No, according to the, to the Bible, you know what your nationality is? According to the Bible, you're an Israelite. You're a so, so-called African-American? Your driver's license identifies you as, as black? You're, you're, you're an Israelite. The Bible is your history book. Right? This right here was written for you and for your father and for your mother and for and your for brothers your children. and for your children. This right here. Bible, give me a Revelation chapter 2 verse 24. Book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 24. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Tyria. Uh, go uh, jump down uh, to verse 26. This is Revelation chapter 2 and verse 26. And he that overcometh and keep my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Read it again. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works. What are the works? works? The works are the commandments. To that man that overcome his sin, his lust. To that man or woman that overcome his lust, his evilness, his wickedness. To that man that can overcome and keep the works, can do the commandments. Read. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Unto the end, until the return of Christ. Unto the end, until the return of Christ. Christ is going to return. Christ will return. And my man in the car. Is that your mom? Say mom. In the car. Keep reading. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. The Bible says he'll give him power over who? The nations. Over the nations. Over the nations, the Bible says. It says I'll give him power over the nations. Read it again. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. If we want power over the nations, we better listen up. If we want power over the other nations, we better listen up. But if you are content living the way we live right now as a people, always uh, gunned down, always profiled, always uh, uh, can't have a job. If you are content living this lifestyle, go ahead and plug your ears up. But if you are unhappy, if you're dissatisfied with this way of life, read it again. Revelations 2 and verse 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. The Bible says I will give him power over the other nations. Read on. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And how are we going to uh, deal with those other nations? Rule them with a rod of iron. We're going to rule them with a rod of iron. But how can we rule a nation with a rod of iron and we don't even have our mind right? As men, we are comfortable walking around with our, with our ass out our pants down to our knees. How can we rule a nation and as men, we are comfortable walking around showing our derriere? Give me um, uh, uh, 2 Samuel 10.4. 2 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 4. Read. Wherefore, Hannah, take David's servants and shave off the one half of their head braid, uh -huh. I'm sorry, what, one half of their beards, and cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks. Even down to the buttocks, right? So these two men, these two prophets, 
these two, two men, messengers of David, they were disgraced. They had their bottom, their pants cut off so that their butt was revealed. Read on. Wherefore Hannah took David's servants and shaved off the one half of their beards and cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks. Even down to the buttocks. Go on. And sent them away. When they told it unto David, he said to meet them, because the men were greatly ashamed. The, it was a shame. The Bible says it was a shame for a man to show his butt, to show his derriere, to have his pants sagging. The Bible says it was a shame. But we're comfortable. So either we can continue living in, 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 uh, in shamefulness or we can begin to live as though we know we are meant to rule over other nations. That's right. As though we know we are meant to rule over other nations. Go back to Revelation 2 and 26. Read that again. One last time. Book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 26. Go on. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Uh -huh. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. The Bible says he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Go on. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. The other nations shall be broken to shivers. Go on. Even as I receive of my father, and I will give him the morning star. Right, and I'm going to give him Christ Jesus, the morning star, the understanding. This is what the Bible is telling us. And, and my man, let me ask you a question. In the red car, do you know? You read the Bible? You know what your nationality is according to the Bible? Say a, a king. That's 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 a that's a title. Your nationality the, your nationality reveals who you descended from. Who is your father's father, father, father? Who did you descend from? Right? Because white people descended from someone. Chinese people descended from someone. Who did we descend from? You know, check this out. Watch this. Ent entertain me for one quick second, right? I'm going to say a word, and then I want you to name what country, what land they come from, right? The Danish. Where do they come from? Come from Dane. The, uh, the Swedes. Where do they come from? Sweden, right? The Irish, where do they come from? From Ireland. The French, where do they come from? From where? Paris. Okay, from France. Egyptians, where do they come from? From Egypt. Uh, Liberians, where do they come from? From, from Libya, right? I'm sorry, from Liberia. African Americans. Where do they come from? Or the blacks, where do they come from? Look at you. Now you had, to, you had to describe a whole land continent instead of saying a specific country. You know why? We lost our inheritance. So then that begs the question, who are we? The Bible tells us who we are, right? Check this out before you go. Give me Deuteronomy 2868. I'm going to show you who we are, where we come from, according to the Bible. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. The Lord is going to bring the Israelites into Egypt, into slavery. The word Egypt means slavery. Again with ships, slave cargo ships, right? What race of people went to slavery on slave cargo ships? And you see this poster? What race of people went to slavery on slave cargo ships? We did. Did the white people experience this? Did the Chinese people experience this? Did the Arabs experience this? No. We, we experienced this. We did. The Native Americans experienced it. Right? The Native Americans experienced it. 
and the Hispanics. We're the only ones that experience this, right? So who are we then? If, if we fit what he just read, we the one last time for. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. The Lord is going to bring the Israelites into slavery again with ships. We experienced it. It's already happened. Right? Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. The way I told you it's going to happen, it's going to happen. It did happen. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. Uh-huh. And there... You will see our homeland no more again. Read. And there ye shall be sold. What we sold right here? Sold to Master Charles for a dollar. Sold to Master, to Master Smith for $500. Read. Sold unto our enemies. Uh-huh. For bondmen and for bondwomen. For slave men and slave women. So who are you? You're an Israelite. That's what, right. For the system, Israelites, right? This book, this is our history book. This is our book. These are our records, right? This tells us how to change the narrative. Look at this. This ain't living, man. This ain't living. This, this is the blueprint. How to change the narrative, right? This is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. That's right, bring it out. Right? Come on over, man. Have a dialogue. Let me give you a fire. Come on over here. Let me give you a fire. You know who you are according to the Bible? Okay, all, all right, praises. All, right. all praises. Let's get ready. Matthew. The book of Matthew, chapter 26 and verse 6. Now when Jesus was in Bethany. You know what? Before you get Matthew, before you get Matthew, before you get Matthew, go to the go to Ezekiel. Go to Ezekiel. Uh, of Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 32 and lo thou art unto thy themselves as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice so Ezekiel chapter 33 and, and, and 32 uh -huh. and lo thou art unto them as a very lovely song the Bible says that these two men with the blue t-shirts on, who come to this corner just about every single week, right? For about the last, we've been coming to this corner for the last nine, ten months. Yeah. To this particular corner, right? Mm-hmm. So some folks have seen us repeatedly at this corner, correct? Read it again. So Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 32. And lo. Thou art unto them as a very lovely song. It says we are unto the people as a very lovely song. It's like we take the microphone and we sound like Luther Vandross. <laughs> it's as if we take the microphone and sound like Freddie Jackson. Go on. What you say? Who is that? Listen, listen, listen to what the listen to what he's saying. Read it again. This is Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 32. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song. The Bible said that these two men that you see reading, on, reading this Bible on this microphone, that it's that we are like to the people a very lovely song. We should be. Read it again. Ezekiel 33 and 32. And lo, thou art unto themselves a very lovely song. Uh-huh. A one that has a pleasant voice. A one that has a very pleasant voice. Go on. And can play well on in on an instrument. Uh-huh. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. They hear our words, but they do them not. That's, that's the harsh reality. You hear the words we are preaching, but you don't do what the words tell you to do. We come out, we want our people, we love our people, we want our people to repent. 
Give me Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Book of Leviticus. 19 and 17. 19 and verse 17. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. We love our people, which is why we come out here week after week after week after week. Go ahead. Thou shalt in any, thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, and not suffer su not suffer sin upon him. We love our people, which is why we come out and, and show our people what they must do to get the kingdom. Right? Go on. Is thou, that it? No. Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. We love ourselves. So we come out and we want to extend that love to our people, which is why we come week after week after week after week. Go to Matthew 26. To the book of Matthew, chapter 26 and verse 6. Now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he said at me. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she had wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she had poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman had done be told for a memorial of her. All praises. All praises. Shalom until we see you again, Lord willing. We will be here next week.